Welcome to the Simply Real Life podcast. I'm Sarah, the founder of Simply Real Health, here to help you simplify, amplify, and elevate your life. This show is for those of you who want the real talk on how to live a more intuitive and intentional life, a life that's healthy from the inside out, and one that feels more effortless, aligned, simple, and more alive. We cover it all from health, wellness, mindset, motherhood, daily habits and rituals, to business and relationships, creativity and growth, and tiny tricks to feeling your best and the energetics behind it all. All filled with personal stories, unfiltered conversations, and of course, answering all of your burning questions, all in the way of simplicity and keeping it real so that you can create your own version of your healthiest life. Let's do it. Hi guys, welcome back to the show this week. I'm so glad that you're here and thank you for listening. We've got a fun little episode today, at least fun for me, because I feel like this is one of my secret, but maybe not so secret (laughs) passions and hobbies in life is all things skincare and beauty. Today's episode is going to be focused mostly on skincare because it's actually one of the questions that I get asked the most. And it's not because I have perfect skin, but I think that there's such a big discrepancy. This is so similar to food, of course, but between the way that we've grown up thinking about our skin or being educated about our skin and what to do about it versus the way that our bodies naturally work. And I think there's this huge movement now between like food, wanting to maybe reduce some of the chemicals, some of the toxins, move to a more non-toxic, type of way of taking care of your skin and other things in your beauty and in your household and thinking about what's in your air and what's in your water, just like all these things that we are environmentally surrounded with. I think there's a big movement right now and a big awareness, thank God, (laughs) that that is starting to become more of a thing because it is a huge factor in how we feel. It's a huge factor in our health, but it is one of those things that I think it takes first being educated about food to understand what that means to then look at the other areas of your life too, and then start to wonder, okay, if I'm, if I'm putting this time and intention into my food and trying to get it to be more real and more simple and more back to the pure state of things, what am I doing with all these other things in my life? And so at least for me, that was the natural progression is starting with food and then starting to look at these different areas. And I just have always loved skincare. I've always loved beauty. I've always loved makeup. And it's been this very long journey, I would say for myself, of finding different types of products, finding different techniques, finding different methods that were just a little bit more aligned to how I want to live. And I mean that in all areas of life. I would feel so strange putting so much time and attention and energy into my food and then not thinking at all about the things that I'm putting on my skin, in my skin, the different ways that I want to take care of it. I think especially in a longer term view. From a higher level, let me back this up for a second, because if if you're anything like me, you might have grown up in this era around our skin where it was all about stripping it down. It was about the most harsh procedures or types of products that you could do. Remember those poor peeling strips where it was supposed to take out blackheads on your nose and it was all those micro scrub brushes and the plastic beads that would be like exfoliating your face, like the peach scrub. I look back at that now, and those are all things I did. The astringent toners were tightened your face and you feel like your face couldn't move. It was like the more harsh, the better. And I'm just so glad that (laughs) things have started to come back in a different way because now knowing what I know, all of that stuff actually creates bad skin. It creates this disruption in the skin's natural microbiome, which actually needs natural oil production to keep it hydrated. And if you strip that all down and the body is so smart, it's going to automatically produce more of that. And that's where you get overactive oil glands. And then that causes acne and clogged pores. And then it's this cycle. So very similar to what happens with food. 
not understanding how the body works, not understanding what the body needs. It's not understanding the body's very wise mechanisms that we are always built to be healthy and always built to be functioning well, even with things like our skin and our digestion, but it's us that gets in the way and it's the misinformation and, and usually just marketing, honestly, and so much money being poured into these different industries and these products make so much money and then targeting them at teenage girls like me that were so insecure and having any type of acne was horrible. And I think now about that and I smile thinking, man, I wish someone would have taught me, I wish I would have known what I know now, that the skin is one of the biggest organs in the body, which is why it's important to think about what you're putting on it and what you're putting in it and how you treat it because we absorb everything that goes in our skin. So skincare and makeup and personal care products like shampoo, conditioner, body wash, all of that stuff gets absorbed. It's not like our skin keeps it all out. We actually absorb it and then it goes into our bloodstream and of course affects things. It can bring neurotoxins into your bloodstream, which then affects your brain. They've done all these studies now with all these different chemicals that have been added that now have been linked to cancer. And there's so many different examples of that. One, I think being aware that like food, marketing and the trends are not where it's at to follow. And really thinking through this more wise and grounded way of how our bodies actually work. What do they need? What things are weighing them down or taking them down a level and how they're burdening the body with more things to process through, more things to try and naturally fix, like the overuse of stripping products on the skin that actually makes your skin worse. The second thing, before I talk about some of the favorite new things I've been trying, the favorite new products I've been trying specifically for this time of year, is that your skin is a automatic reflection of what is going on inside your body. So the state of your skin being healthy, being glowy, being hydrated and balanced oftentimes has to start from the inside. If you have dry skin, the first question I would ask you is, are you drinking enough water? Is it clean water? How often, if your skin is dry, there's some component where it's not getting the nutrients it needs to do the job. If it's a lot of acne, a lot of times that can be linked to bad quality dairy or food sensitivities or allergies that have gone undiagnosed or not eating quality and real food for the most part. Like a lot of the chemicals that are in more processed foods and things like that can cause issues with our skin, whether that's eczema or it's acne. Those are probably like the two most popular ones linked directly almost to food. And it's this outward sign of what is going on inside your body and specifically what is going on inside your gut. And because those two things are connected, that is always the best place to start is putting a little bit more intention into the types of food you're eating, the quality of food that you're eating, going back to those basics, oftentimes eating lots of vegetables, like things that have high nutrient density is going to serve your body and your skin and your digestion and your hormones. Every system in your body, let's be honest, is going to serve it in such a different way so that you don't have this need or reliance on 12-step skincare. That's overcompensating for something that can be the reflection of what's going on the inside. This topic actually comes up a lot in Instagram questions, and it's not because I have perfect skin, but I think that there's a lot of misconceptions around skincare, around different products, and just this curiosity of what are you doing? What are you using? What are the things you think about? Because it can be also a little tricky to find that balanced place with it of not being all or nothing, not needing to be 100% perfect and that you have zero chemicals in your life because that's just not possible in the world that we live in. There are so many environmental things and things outside of our control. If you go to a hotel, if you go to a friend's house, if you're in different environments, even walking through different stores, you can't control the amount of fragrance or the Febreze or the weird plugins that they have or the air fresheners in an Uber. There's no way to live a life that is 100% non-toxic and (laughs) clean. And on the 
flip side of that, there's this balance, I think, in between the two extremes of not caring at all about any of that and then being so wrapped up and obsessed with trying to be perfect at it that either way makes it very hard. Either way is not a healthy place to be. So I think that's why these questions come in a lot, that middle ground place of, yes, you're hopefully eating really well and drinking water and taking care of your body, taking care of your internal self will often have this secondary effect of not only energy, mood, digestion, balance, hormones, but things like great skin. And I think that's an important connection to make first. Let me talk through some summer skincare specifically, things that I feel like I have been noticing and trying and having a little bit more fun with because it can be more of an underground world where you are interested in alternatives or you're not wanting to go the route of injectables and wanting to stay away from those because they are very high in mercury and they do have a lot of downsides. I do think a lot of injectables and fillers are so popular now. And let me just be the first to say, you have got to do you when it comes to this. It's like you have got to really figure out what's important to you, what feels best to you, what feels the most aligned to you. And I'm not here to judge anyone or anything, but there is an overwhelming amount, it seems, of people nowadays where that has just become the norm and it's become normal for very young people in their teens and in their 20s to be almost obsessed with this perfect aesthetic look with no wrinkles, there's no movement, there's nothing. And in the world that is more dominated by that, there are other things and ways to take care of your skin that's not full blown into that whole world of things. And that's what I want to talk about and share today because it's not as known, it's not as talked about, it's definitely not as popular of a thing. And I think there's a lot of reasons for that, but a lot of it can be around quick fix mentality and not wanting to age or not wanting things to change. And I get all of that. Believe me, I do understand that. And I think that there are so many points on either side. You just have to decide what the value is for you. I do think that there is going to be a bigger resurgence back into these more natural ways to take care of your skin and smooth wrinkles, just because I think it's going to be this generation's version of smoking, where we look back and the evidence is there all along. We knew it wasn't good for us. Then we go overboard with it and it becomes addictive. And then it changes your self-image and how you're looking at yourself. And then I think probably in 10 to 20 years, it's going to be, whoa, what were we doing? That was crazy. There's so many different sides to this conversation about Botox, injectables, fillers. And I think it's important to notice because of this conversation, which is a little bit more on the flip side of what else is out there. Again, going back to some of these practices that are more old world or they've existed for a long time, but are now making this comeback. And it's nice to have both options, to know that there are a lot of different ways to approach your skin, maybe to approach the conversation of aging. There's so many different ways and things that you can try and test out. And it's going to be different for everyone what feels best to them. For me, I have this deep interest in, of course, what can I do that's not in that path? And who knows, I may change my stance on this down the road, but I think for so long, I just have been especially in the mode of being pregnant and nursing and wanting to do everything I can preventively and for the health of my skin. I get so many questions about it. And yes, it is hard. Yes, my friends do look amazing and they probably look younger than me, but I really want to be testing and trying all of these other things first. And that feels more aligned with me and what I believe in and researching what goes into some of those other products, the fillers and the Botox and stuff, traces of mercury and lead and cadmium and, and all these things. I'm like, gosh, I would never eat that. So it's hard for me to wrap my mind around putting it in my skin, but we'll never say never. And it's not about being completely perfect and rigid 
in one way. So I may eat my words later, but that has been a question that has come up a lot is thoughts on Botox and on fillers. Right now, it's not for me. Um, I'm also in this stage and season where it can't be for me. So <laughs> um, maybe some of you can relate. So what are all the other things out there that we can do? So let's get into some of these things because for a long time, I, I've had a great practice of taking care of my skin and trying to do it from the inside out. And it's why I love companies like Primally Pure. We have the founder. I'll link that in the show notes down below. But talking through importance of quality of ingredients, ingredients you can pronounce, things that your skin can actually absorb. It's like feeding your skin with real nutrients and the things that it needs. One of the basic things, I think if you're not doing this already, one of the best things you can do to start is using an oil-based cleanser, which is against everything that we have really ever learned about skin. You're like, oil on my face, won't that clog my pores and won't that cause acne and breakouts. But the thing is cleansing with oil, and this is something I learned through Primally Pure, is actually one of the most nourishing things you can do for your skin because it does not strip away the microbiome. It doesn't strip the skin's barrier of protection. And so you're able to keep that pH balance which is there for your skin to produce the perfect amount of oil so that it's hydrated and, and bouncy and energized versus completely stripping it down, then your skin overproducing, and then it's this weird balance. So doing some type of oil cleanser, my favorite is the Primally Pure one. I will link it in the show notes below. But something I've been trying too, and this is after I got to visit their spa, was doing a double cleanse. And this is Specifically, I think more so in summer will be something of what I'm starting to adopt and do because they have, so they have the oil cleanser and then they also have a bar and I have their plumping bar. And before I was thinking double cleansing, I don't need to do that. That's overkill. But I think because of the use of more sunscreen and more products on our face, sometimes in the summer for protection, that it can really help. And so I put the oil on my face. I get a really warm washcloth and then wipe it off and just splash my face with water. Then I will, and oftentimes this is in the shower. So I put the oil on before I get in the shower. And then I have my plumping bar in the shower. And then I just wet the washcloth with the bar and do that over my face. And I'm not kidding you. I don't know what it is. My skin feels so smooth and soft after that. Not stripped. It's not like squeaky clean, that overly clean, tight feeling. It just feels so smooth and like a deeper cleanse. And I don't do that every day, but like a couple times a week or specifically when I'm wearing sunscreen or when I have a heavier foundation on or something like that has been something that I'm like, wow, I really am noticing a difference <laughs> with that. Something else that I have also been loving is playing around with facial cupping. There's so many old world theories about wrinkles in particular being a sign of stagnation in the tissues of your face and in your neck, like all the way down to your shoulders, where it's a sign of tension and of muscles being overly used. And so the theory behind that is releasing a lot of the tension and muscles in your facial structures and down your neck and even down through the tops of your clavicle bones, which is where a lot of lymph nodes are, that opening up the blood flow and getting more movement is actually what helps smooth your skin versus this other theory, which is much more popular now, of freezing everything, of paralyzing the muscle so it doesn't move at all versus you actually want to encourage blood flow and movement and breaking up of the tissue. And this is something that I feel like I've been studying for a long time. And one of the original ways I was doing it was through the gua sha stone. And now this is the next level. It's supposed to smooth out the skin and also give you this fresh glow because you're getting so much more blood flow into those areas that are typically more stagnant or we hold them in different holding patterns. While I have loved those things for a while, I feel like I go in and out with them because they're not always as practical for every day. And it's something where you kind of have to do it pretty consistently to notice the difference. So I think in seasons of having young kids and babies and 
the mornings are pretty quick sometimes and I'll do it when I can remember. But having this little handheld two ball roller thing has been so helpful because it's something I can do very quick within a couple of minutes. I'm not rushing, but it works rolling it over the face. You guys have probably seen me do this on Instagram. It wakes up your face and it de-puffs. So that tool has been awesome. And then facial cupping. So facial cupping, I have never played around with much until this year. And I first did it down at the Primary Pure Spa. And it's this little tiny suction cup where you put some type of serum on your face, like serum or oil, and then you also spray it. So I use their everything spray or their soothing spray on top. And so your skin is pretty dewy, glowy, and you press the suction cup down and it suctions onto your face and you're just pulling up through your jawline and then down your neck and then pulling up through your cheeks and down You're encouraging that blood flow, but I have found it's so much more effective than gua sha or even the roller. You're not supposed to do it every day. So a couple times a week, but I really notice a difference in puffiness and I think in my wrinkles feeling a little softened and I know the inside is great for cellular production. It's great for blood flow. It's great for moving my lymph nodes around. It's great for deep puffing. But then also I'm noticing this physical difference, like a little more motivated to want to do that. And that's just something I never have tried before. It's actually very simple. So that's something I have been really loving. It's an ancient practice, but is now coming back. And to me, it just makes sense. And like, it just makes sense to be doing that and why my skin reacts like that. Something else I've been loving, and this is like such a trend right now, I feel like on TikTok and Instagram is either forehead taping or masks. It doesn't have to be forehead. I think I've had deep, deep set wrinkles in my forehead since I've been, I don't know, 18 or 19. Like they just, I think genetically are just there. And so playing around with some of the masks. I've been trying some of the reusable ones, um, which I haven't been loving as much. And then there's the ones that are more disposable, which sadly I've been loving those more. Um, You have to definitely look at ingredients because they vary widely. The concept of taping your face, especially at night. So something like the Frownies brand, I think is the most original one where we are wetting them and they stick and there's forehead ones and cheek ones and under eye ones. I've just been playing around with the forehead ones and I'll put the ones that I have been loving. They're just on Amazon and it makes such a difference. And I don't really know why or the mechanism of how it's working, but I feel like as an alternative, I'm not somebody who's trying to go glass skin. I (laughs) very much know my age and I'm fine with looking my age, but it is nice to feel a little bit more refreshed. I think especially in pregnancy after being in bed for so long. So it's this little thing that I've been doing. I just put them on at night. I sleep in it overnight. It looks kind of ridiculous, but it is working. So I will put those down below. There's lots of different brands and ways that you can go, but I do think it works. I've tried some that have not worked great, but I think the concept of it is really interesting. So Again, that's feeling fun. (laughs) Different things like under eye masks. I have some favorites. They're not 100% totally clean, but I do feel like they work so well. A lot of people like to wear them when they're sleeping overnight. I don't know how that works because it just makes me, I don't know, something that doesn't really work with my eye mask very well. (laughs) So I do like wearing them a couple times a week in the day to get a, a little boost. So we'll put those in the show notes too down below. Something else that has been such a fave and is so great for summertime is an ice roller. And I know that there's a lot of fancy ones out there that you can use, and I'm sure that they are awesome. I have this ice roller that's, I think, $10 on Amazon, and it's one of my favorite things. Like It makes me feel so energized and ready for the day. And there is science behind it. I think ice on your face constricts your blood vessels which also is connected to your vagus nerve. So it actually has this really calming effect. So anytime you feel anxious, it can be a great thing to use for that. But I find the combination of doing some type of rolling or gua sha or the facial cupping, and then a little bit later as I'm walking around, making breakfast for the kids, doing even just like two to three minutes of the ice roller, you look like you've just got a facial and it feels so good. 
And it's so simple, just the concept of ice and how refreshing that is for the skin. And especially I think in summer when it's hot, it feels extra good. And then my kids love it. Anytime they get a little owie or they fall down, it's so much easier than an ice pack. And it's so much more fun for them to use that over whatever area they need to. I should probably get them their own, but that's been something that I have definitely been loving. And we'll put that in the show notes below too. In terms of other types of products, specifically with summer coming into mind, is this idea of sunscreen and sun exposure. And I am someone who I believe in both. I think that there's two extreme camps where it's like, don't get any sun. All sun is bad. Use a ton of sunscreen, which are, by the way, most of them have so much stuff in them that's deeply impactful to our body and not in a great way. And there's a whole new generation of sunscreens coming out that are more mineral-based, non-toxic, the actual blocking of the sun versus some of the chemical-based sunscreens. And then there's this camp on the other side, which is sun exposure is great. We need vitamin D. We need to do this. And there's a lot of people that say, like, don't wear any sunscreen at all. So I, of course, fall somewhere in the middle where I'm like, I hear both sides. And I think there's benefits to both sides. So something that I love doing, especially in the summer, is this app. It's called D-Minder. So D and then M-I-N-D-E-R. We'll put it in the show notes below. Where You plug in your geographic location and it actually shows the UV ray rating for whatever time of day it is when you open your app. This is a great way to get some sun, specifically early morning sun, and then late late afternoon, like kind of in that post-afternoon time, shows the UV ratings very, very low, zero or one. And that's a great time to be out in the sun and exposing some part of your body, at least for a couple minutes a day. And that's a very healthy thing. And then there's the circumstances of you're going out, you're going to the beach, you know, you're going to be in the sun for like long amounts of time. There is a beautiful protective mechanism that our bodies over time develop their own natural sunscreen, but it is very minimal and very incremental to build that up. And most of us, that's not how modern day works. And I think specifically if you live in the Pacific Northwest too, it's like we go so long without consistent sun. And then all of a sudden it's beautiful out and so sunny and you want to be out there. Like our bodies can't catch up quite as quickly. So I am a fan of doing no sunscreen in the morning, using that app to help gauge what I'm doing. And then the other parts of the day, I'm wearing a hat every, everywhere. Like Tracker hats, baseball hats, just great sun hats. I really, in the last couple of years, have like invested in those that I love wearing and I don't mind wearing because I don't love the feeling of it just on my face and on my chest all the time when it's not those early or late hours. So, that being said, I also think sunscreen is a great thing, but it really matters the ingredients and what's in it. And you want it to work. I've tried a lot of products where it's natural and it's zinc based and it's a blocker and it is completely white. It gets on your clothes and it just doesn't rub in very well. While that may be the best, there's also a practical level to this of like, if it feels like that, I'm not going to want to put it on. It's too heavy. It gets on other stuff. I'm not going to want to use it. Finding a couple of different brands and options that are maybe in that in between zone where You can look it up on the EWG app and see the rankings for how toxic or non-toxic the ingredients are. One of my favorites is the Pipette skin brand, which is actually meant for kids. It's got SPF 50, but it's one of those middle ground ones that works really well. It rubs in. It doesn't feel extra greasy. It works like I don't get burned with it. And it's mineral based. So all that being said, just encouragement to... Look at your sunscreen, especially if you're using the more conventional ones, really taking a look at what those are. I mean, there's some great options now. Babo Botanicals for kids that make a great baby sunscreen. But this idea of when it is in those midday hours or you're outside a lot, like I am or I'm going on walks, either being smart about it, not scorching your skin, but also getting some sun and being outdoors is so healthy for you too. So I do think it's kind of that balance in between. 
One of the last products I will name and talk about is the Ilia Serum with SPF because that has been my favorite thing and sort of solves the problem of you want sunscreen on your face for the most part. But also, if you're going to wear any type of makeup, then it mixes with it pretty weirdly. And this product has been my favorite for the last three years. It's this serum that has SPF 40 in it, a clean sunscreen, like it's ranked very well, but it's also a tinted moisturizer, so you don't need to wear a ton of foundation or things over it. It does look very strange the first minute or two, I would say, when you put it on. But then after five minutes, it settles into your face and it looks great. It's dewy, but not too oily. It's one of my favorite things. So I'll put the link for that below. Anything else? I don't think so. Those have been things I've been loving and playing with and experimenting lately. And I do have to say, even though I am in this stage and season right now of also being pregnant, and there's also a lot of factors going on, my skin looks pretty good for my age. and. I feel good in it, which is maybe the more important part because it feels like I'm taking care of it from the inside out in a way that I feel good about right now and that feels safe for me. None of them are dangerous when you're pregnant, when you're nursing. It's just nice to have those options. I hope this episode was helpful in some way or got you thinking about something or excited to maybe try something new. I always love sharing all the things that... I'm playing with. I'm sometimes like a human guinea pig over here. (laughs) I'm always wanting to at least try stuff. And then I only share the stuff that I feel like is working and actually effective and has been feeling really good. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your week, no matter where you are. And thank you so much for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this episode and want more like it, make sure you're subscribed to the Simply Real Life podcast wherever you listen to podcasts and maybe share it with a friend or two. That would mean the world.